Hey, welcome to Doug Padgett Radio. This is the uh, take edition with uh, the old sidekick from the previous version of Doug Padgett Radio. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Um, we are uh, we're going to do the take and the take. The take and the talk are the three versions of the radio show. Uh, the take is our take on an issue of the day. And um, Victoria put up a posting on Facebook the other day, and um, I wanted to ask her about it. So here's what you wrote. Yes. Should I tell you what you wrote? Should, yeah, I, let's, should I remind let's you? Please. Should I remind you? So this was last week. Uh, uh, you wrote that last week there was a massacre in Nigeria and a shooting in Paris. So these two big news stories. But most people only heard of one news story, which you brought out here. You said what happened in Paris was terrible, but there were so many more lives lost in Nigeria, yet it was barely covered in the news. And as I think about how it might take small steps to make the world better, there's a poem poem by Denez Smith comes to mind. Then you list the poem, mm-hmm. and that same morning. I had thought about this very same thing that in Nigeria there were the reports then were two thousand people were killed yes. by Boko Haram. And they're climbing. Mm-hmm. And so it's a terrorist group that's going through Nigeria mm-hmm. and um, in a terrorist activity um, fueled by particular views of, of religion and culture. Right. Just the same thing is happening in Paris. Right. And hardly anyone know, knew about it. Right. Um, But this thing in Paris, a number of people died, which is equally tragic and terrible and horrible. But that caused um, an entire worldwide community to get together for a march. And in Nigeria... Not much. So why why did that strike you? What are you thinking? I think this is an, an example of one of many where when we expect a particular crime in a particular place, then... We don't really talk about much. The oh, happens. so you think that people in that we sort of expect, expect that that'll happen in Africa? Yep, but we don't expect it in Paris. How about that? We see this. We don't expect it in the suburbs. We expect it in our urban centers. We and so our perception wow. about where violence happens affects how we respond to it. So this might be why some people will say, oh, if you end up with a particular kind of, uh, of a shooting in a suburb, we would be You'll thrown hear off. You'll more about it. But a daily shooting in the city of Chicago, you're just like, oh, that's what happens yeah. with those people. One of the lines in the poem by Denez Smith is, it's comparing the Trojan War versus all these shootings of African-American people saying, you know, one white woman is stolen, that's a war. A black man is shot, and that's Tuesday. That's the line. It's a great line. And it gets at this exact issue, which also gets at the larger issue of all the the unrest mm-hmm. in our country mm-hmm. over police brutality, mm-hmm. race relations, racism, on mm-hmm. um, institutional level, mm-hmm. that our perceptions mm-hmm. where certain people are perceiving a mm-hmm. threat where there is no threat issue mm. of I can't breathe or someone has been subdued mm-hmm. and then it clearly is subdued and yet still is killed even after where an unarmed individual who has no way of harming someone is yeah. perceived it's our yes. perceptions mm. that are can be so very dangerous huh. and also the way in which we are unaware of our perceptions yeah. is so very dangerous. So perceptions and expectations you're sort of bringing yes. up. Like we perceive some people to be a threat who aren't. Mm-hmm. We don't perceive people who often are a threat to be. And then we have expectations. Well, that's just going to happen there, but I wouldn't expect that to happen. here. And this is worldwide too. Like this is the thing yes. that has struck me about what's going on in Nigeria is the whole world responded differently mm-hmm. to in – a day and a half or two days, 2,000 people, they think. At the mm-hmm. time, the reports were 2,000. I heard another report on this the other day that they don't even know how many people. No. Like It's kind of like in the U.S. We don't know how many police officers shoot people right. because of all the things we keep track of in the world, we, we don't keep track of that. Like we kind of keep track of how many, you know, um, illegal immigrants are coming in every day, but we don't keep track of how many times a police officer fires his weapon into the body of another person. That is unbelievable to me. And that's another factor in all of this is what we talk about and what we don't, the places of silence Mm -hmm. are very, very telling. The fact that we had to dig down quite deep (laughs) to get information about what happened in Nigeria one or two days after. It was just a blip. The fact that 
uh, we have this lawsuit now in Minnesota yeah. where Black Lives Matter hosted a pre protest mm -hmm. at the Mall of America and the police were sent in in riot mm -hmm. gear for a peaceful protest. Yeah. And that's being reported on, mm -hmm. which is good. But one of the things that is not You mean it's being reported on that they, the police militarized the response yes. to a And who you, who you think should be held responsible mm -hmm. for all the cost of that because mm. the city of Bloomington is suing, trying to sue some of these protesters. Oh, I heard that yesterday. And they're yeah. saying, the protesters are saying, the police shut them all down. Yeah. We didn't. It depends on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that's mm -hmm. rarely mentioned is the fact that just a year ago, there was an equal sized gathering of people to sing songs, to raise awareness about ca cancer. And the, Paul, mm -hmm. the, the Mall of America officials welcomed them and it was a, a peaceful event. And it, it mm -hmm. calls into question, well, why are we so saying things about fire hazards and numbers when mm -hmm. There was another gathering, hmm. and and yet people don't mention that. And hmm. so, what we, how we frame mm -hmm. our conversations yes. about this, mm -hmm. how the media does, it also plays a big role in how yeah. we think about these things. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I kind of get the arguments that people make. Like, look, when you kill um, certain people, like uh, police officers or presidents or um, people in the government or people in the media. You're, that steps beyond an attack on an individual mm -hmm. and is really designed to be an attack on a whole system and structure, right? So mm -hmm. we should respond differently to that, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you were to, to you know, somehow make an accusation that a, a political leader should be, um, shouldn't live anymore, should, you should kill him, mm -hmm. um, you will be punished differently in our country than if you say, uh, my neighbor shouldn't live anymore. I think I want to kill him. Like mm -hmm. people would just say like, well, you actually have to act on that. But just saying that you want to kill the president is enough to, we have a different set of laws around that, right? Mm -hmm. Because one attacks the power system and one, one doesn't. So I sort of get the idea, you know, that you could have attacks in Paris on the media. We should notice that that's a little different than just killing six people, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of get that, but not really, right? Like when 2,000 people. Degree. So when someone says, well, you had a march at the Mall of America that was designed to shut the mall down, okay? Because that's what the marchers said when mm -hmm. they, were, when they, they did that. They wanted to they weren't doing disrupt a, they, commerce. Yeah, so they said, let's mm -hmm. have an event to disrupt, let as opposed to, I'm guessing the cancer one. They weren't was trying just, to shut down commerce. Was, was just another milking of people Fair for enough. the for the cancer mm -hmm. industry. Um, uh, so they're like like they're different kinds of events, right? Mm -hmm. Where one is like um, intended to be disruptive, and the other one is is your regular run of the mill event or right. crime. But I think that's part of what you're getting at, and I think this is a good take on this that the expectations that oh, if you're just killing a person, that's that just kind of doesn't matter. But if yeah. you're going to like take down the system and the structure and the authority. So the thing about all lives matter or black lives matter, like yeah. I think we need to say in our country, life matters. All life, all lives matter, even more than systems, even more than structures, even more than commerce, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, um, it's more important than that because the argument about the thing at the Mall of America was, well, these people are trying to disrupt commerce and that's really unfair to all the people who are mm -hmm. trying to run their businesses. You know, I heard that argument mm -hmm. from a bunch of people like all these folks, you know, were just, they were bothered and they shouldn't have had to be bothered. But that's the whole point is right. like, if you think they should have had, if you think they shouldn't be bothered by this, yeah, then you're responding in one way. But when there are, um, you know, in this country, I think this is true. It's hard to know that the statistics that there are, um, there's a killing of a police officer of an unarmed person every day. Mm -hmm. 365 of those at least. I think there's like 600 police killings a year. It's hard. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know the numbers. And many of those are unarmed or um, un, uh, un, unlethally armed uh -huh. brown or black people. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. That seems like something that we should stop commerce for to yes. say – Hey, hang on a second. Yes. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's not enough to just have Monday off of school and close some banks for Martin Luther King mm -hmm. Day if we can't also. Now, 
should people be using protesting disruption as the only way to turn something out? What was interesting in Paris, in my mind, was yeah. they shut everything down for a positive kind of protest. Yes. Like, and this is just a tactic, I'm arguing. Like, yeah. how often can you use positive tactics to, to, mm-hmm. to stop and raise awareness? And how often do you use... Um, uh, irritating and disruptive tactics, and you know, I like would, sitting in the middle of a highway or a sit-in in the, right. in the 60s. Or something. I would hope that we can move toward that and we're people in power who mm. are sympathetic mm-hmm. to wanting to change our institutions mm-hmm. to make things more equitable, mm-hmm. that they would try to make um, possible mm. ways for groups like Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. to work together. Part of what I think is challenging in this is there's so much work that needs to be done on a personal mm-hmm. and institutional mm-hmm. level, and it become it can become very overwhelming mm-hmm. for any of us. But we all have spheres of influence. Yes, all of us do. Mm-hmm. And my challenge to myself is to try to do what is possible yeah. within my sphere of influence, yeah. and I haven't done enough. And I think that it's important for all mm-hmm. of us to take fearless inventory of ourselves mm. and our own prejudices, mm-hmm. but then also to try to work toward it. Yeah. It's, it is. It's in one of the benefits of privilege is that you don't have to think mm-hmm. about certain kinds of, mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. I was with a group of friends. Um, they all happen to be white at that particular moment. And I was bringing up how scared I was because I'm raising two, two brown kids. Mm-hmm. And as they move it, they had become older and mm-hmm. I think about them going into the mm-hmm. world and having to figure out what to do to try to help educate mm-hmm. them to live mm-hmm. in this world when they may be profiled mm-hmm. and things might happen to them that haven't happened to me and the room became very silent mm-hmm. it was extremely uncomfortable mm-hmm. there was there was clearly a sense of we do not want to talk about mm-hmm. this and we don't want you to bring this up and I thought how nice first move mm-hmm. That none of you have to worry about this with your kids. Mm-hmm. That's great. But you know what? I have to worry about it with my yeah. kids. Yeah, we had to worry about it with our kids too. Yes. Right? I mean, I get it too, you know, because when you have, for you, you have um, yeah. uh, Indian and African heritage kids. We had yeah. Mexican, like it's it's a thing. It's a different response that, that they're going to live with in the world. Mm-hmm. And, and I wouldn't even go so far as to say that the that it's the benefit of privilege. I think it's the... I think it's. I think it's a bad thing, not a bad. It effect. is a bad thing. No, like I, a, that's a. That's a good thing to point out in like terms of good. language. We think it's a benefit. Yes, right. But it's it's it's, it's, it's like it's, it's like us. the trust fund kid that you you see and you're like, oh, that guy's so lucky. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to work. Right. Like, no, if you actually think working makes somebody um, live in the world in a way that's really good and positive mm-hmm. and produces good things in them, then that's that, that's, that's kind of not a good thing that you just get to sit around and do whatever you want all day. And if you think, well, if you don't have to worry about how systems unintentionally treat people badly, that's actually not a good thing <laughs> for you. That's thing. We should start to pitch this not as, hey, you've got the privilege of not having to think about this. We, sh- we should say like, there's a couple of things that unfortunately you don't get to see and that keeps you from being a positive human being in the yeah. world. Yeah. Because there's this other built-in bias and, I, and I, it's not um, to replace the racial biases in our country because they're real and deep and, mm-hmm. and profound. But another bi- – obviously, there's the bias of, of income, so there's the mm-hmm. poverty bias. But there's another one, which is what I call the guilty bias. Yeah. If someone's guilty of a crime, we treat people who are guilty mm-hmm. of a crime as if they lose all – all other rights to of yeah. humanity. Like in Chicago, well, most of those killings every day are drug dealers on drug dealers. Right. That's what people so say. So thereby those lives somehow matter yeah. less. You know, that guy, he mm-hmm. stole something from that store. Mm-hmm. So, you know, or yeah. he, he lunged at a police officer and that's totally yes. illegal. So thereby. Or, or, you know, those people are, they are in prison. And you know what? If they did something really bad and they have to live in a six by six yeah. square cell for three months without any human contact, mm-hmm. well, that's just what you get for doing. So like, we have these series. It's like a cascading list of exceptions for who gets to be treated yes. well and whose life matters. Yeah. The color of your skin or in some cultures, the tint of the color of your skin, mm-hmm. right? So in Africa, mm-hmm. it's not about black people and not black people. It's about shades of black people, yeah. right? Dark people are, yeah. are, are in history have always, mm-hmm. and, 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 and all kinds of all kinds of pressure. So there's racial things. There's ethnic 
uh, mm-hmm. problems. There's poverty. Then yeah. there's the behaviors that people have. And this, this behaviors one, people feel real. Like if you point out that someone has a racial bias, they have an ethnic bias, a religious bias, mm-hmm. or even an economic bias, people feel really bad about it. But I've been running around for the last two years trying to tell people they shouldn't have a bias against criminals. Oh my gosh, people are like, (laughs) no, I do get to have a bias against criminals. They did something. I mean, it's really, really remarkable. It happens with gender, it happens with sexuality, Mm -hmm. it happens with able. Oh, those aren't problems anymore. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) it happens with able body. I grew up with a sibling with special needs. Yeah. And it was very interesting to be constantly in this was in the 70s and 80s mm-hmm. when some people with special needs weren't out in the mm-hmm. world a lot mm-hmm. and the the constant struggle we had just to like sit in a restaurant we used to joke we were always placed in the back corner of the restaurant so people as wouldn't see your far sister away from everyone else uh, as possible uh, and 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 one of the things for me that i actually consider a privilege having grown up with her and also raising brown kids is i'm able to see the limits and the mm-hmm. harm of privilege, mm-hmm. as we just mm-hmm. were just discussing, yeah. because of them, yeah. and I'm grateful for mm-hmm. that. And I really hope for all of us that within mm-hmm. our spheres of influence, we can start to look for ways to mm-hmm. push on that and and try to make more space so everybody can breathe a little yeah. easier. Yeah, so all lives matter. So that all lives matter. Regardless, and, yeah, right? The, and, you know, there's there's discussion about, well, why do we have to say black lives matter? Well, we have to say that because clearly they yeah. haven't, it should be that way. Yes. But it hasn't been that yes, way. Yes, right. And so it is very appropriate to claim yes. that as a, this should be yes. reality. Yep. And and as all lives should be, but clearly mm-hmm. they have not all. No, lives. they're not. And and the thing I like about the Black Lives Matters is it's the start of that mm-hmm. conversation. Because then, then you get to say that criminals' lives matter and yes. poor people's lives matter, mm-hmm. and like and and starting to recognize that we have these built-in biases that yeah. that um, just do nothing but cause us cause us all trouble. And it's not until we make the effort to put ourselves in environments where we can see those things by being around people who are different than mm-hmm. us that that allows us I think to start recognizing that I thought I will I didn't think I was a very prejudiced person until uh-huh. I moved to Minneapolis and mm-hmm. started being around more different yes. people yes. than I have been exposed to and I mm-hmm. realized I had a lot Mm-hmm. Of prejudices that I'm continually examining and yeah. trying to change. And we don't even like we, we don't even know sometimes that they exist not only in our own impulses but sometimes in the rules and laws that we make. Yes. Like like to get on my little ballywick for one more second. One of the big things in in uh, housing in the United States is this term called crime free housing. Right. Crime free housing seems like the greatest thing in the world. Who doesn't want to live in a place where you're free of crime? Of course you want to live in a place where you're free of crime. But what they mean is not that. Crime will not be committed here. What mm-hmm. they mean is someone who's been committed of a crime cannot yeah. live here. Right. Can't you buy hear a that? House. It's unbelievable. Like you go into an apartment complex, you try to apply uh, for to rent an apartment. They ask you if you have a conviction on your record, and if you do, you can't okay. live here. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. So we can say, well, that's just you know, who are the people that commit crime? How does somebody keep committing another crime? <laughs> I can't get a job because you don't hire a, right. a convict. I can't have a place to live. Mm-hmm. It's so bad that some people, if you go to jail and you come out and you try to move back in with your family, your own wife, your own children, and they live in a crime-free housing, yeah. they can't live there anymore. Now you've become displaced. Like, it's unbelievable. So we have these built-in biases that we think are there for a good idea. Like, it's a good idea right. to stop the crowd that's going to show up at the mall to disrupt. Or it's a right. good... And they're... We've, got, we've gone long. Almost 20 minutes. Well... Nice to have you back. Nice to be back. That's the take. That's Thanks. Victoria peterson Hillicu. You can find her all over the internet as a super famous person. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> Thank you. Doug Padgett Radio. Hey, Doug Padgett. Uh, book tour coming to cities around the world. Woo-hoo. All around the world. I mean, I can't get to all the world, so I thought I would just do it like in the United States. Because okay. I can't get everywhere in the world. But I'll still call it a world tour because the world's bet, really big. I if there were listeners in other parts of the world who invited you, I bet you'd be open to coming. <laughs> Like in a heartbeat, space station, even out of the world, even anyway. the out of the world book tour. <laughs> That's right. Guys on the space station, I know can listen to this because you're on the internet. I, I, I'd, I'd come up and do a little one day book tour with you. That's Bye. it. The generosity of Doug Paget. It never is stop boundless. giving. It's never stop. <laughs>